no one. First floor, pixie sticks. Just one of the feastables we make in our factory. Here we're testing fun dip. It's so delectable you can even eat the stick. And my favorite, everlasting gobstoppers. They're made from layers and layers and layers and layers of flavors. Whoops, wrong floor. The wild world of Wonka. Wobbly big up magic. I know to compare with your imagination Living there, you'll be free If you truly wish to be Hello, I'm the Loud House Critic, one guy with a thousand views and all the episodes I must review. Say, have you ever heard the term, nothing is sweeter than having a sweet tooth for candy? Then again, nobody says that. Well, now it's a thing now. So there are three things that are really special about this episode review today. Especially when this one is one of my personal top three favorite easily. Especially from a movie that's one of my top three favorites also. First one, my birthday's in two days. Second good thing about this one, it's a low allowed episode. Her gentle presence fills the air A flower in spring Your heart wants to sing She's that special girl You want to know A pretty face A joy forever Precious form that will not die. You're under her trance with only one glance. Such grace, such charm, such savoir faire. She's Miss Wonderful. Candy Crushed, the fifth episode from season seven, and the 300th episode. You heard me correctly, the 300th episode of The Loud House. I was so desperately to actually make this my 300th episode review, but unfortunately I gotta find something even more exciting and more better for my 300th episode, coming soon in May. Anyway, this episode, I can't help but fall in love with this because there are so many different vibes from one of my favorite movies I love so badly all the time. And it made me actually grab so much candy from a gas station and a candy shop and do my own kind of candy shop where you can likely get candy for free. Although everything seems to be sweet about this episode, there's a little bit of sour to this episode. When I heard the episode and what the plot was, I went to watch this episode straight ahead and I came out just loving it, being a candy man myself. But would this episode taste any more sweeter than a cake, M&M's, Swirly Pop, Gummy Bears, Truffles? Or will it be as sour as black licorice, dark chocolate, or coffee bean M&M's? Also, my third great thing about the episode, 
I bring you the one and only who loves Lola Lau the most, Andreas himself. Everybody, I'm glad to be back. What are we gonna go? Oh, Candy Crush. I've seen it. It's pretty sweet to me, but it's time to look into this sweet treat. I'm out of candy puns for now. Good thing you're here, Andres. Come along with me, and you'll actually be in a word of pure imagination. Where have I heard actually heard that from before? Okay, kiddos, I made something special for dessert. It's a frosted linamen bun cake. Linamen bun cake. Seriously, dude, stop with all the lin puns right there. They're not helping. I've always wanted to try bun cake. And, I'm, and I hate to drag this on, but another cake I've always wanted to try is sponge cake. Sponge cake? Yeah, yeah, I've, I hear it all the time. And there's also rum cake. <laughs> to it uh there's nothing there shit dude would you just eat them all yourself or did the food just up and vanish like a fart in the wind don't look at me i prefer mud pies well it's not like it sprouted legs and walked away let's not rule that out my recent experiments in culinary science have yielded surprising results now that i think about it someone ate all the cake pops clyde made me the other day by the way, has it ever occurred to anybody that we just saw so much of the characters here and the at the table, and who is not exactly here right now? Hmm, wonder who could it be? And my butter pecan cookies I made for the drama club bake sale! Whoever took them butter fuss up! <laughs> okay, I will give Luann credit for that kind of good joke, but seriously, somebody in this house has a sweet tooth. And Luann should be lucky that Cookie Monster does not exist in this universe, otherwise... We all be in trouble. Yeah, especially when Senior would have a heart attack. No, he'd probably fate, which makes him such a pussy. Maybe that's why Rita loves him. Sounds like we have a treat thief. Fortunately, Todd's programmed in forensic astronomy. Is she actually talking about bringing food to life? Let's just hope it won't end up like Sasha's party. Oh yeah, fuck you! Let's hope not, it's a children's show. Todd? Initiate culinary investigation mode. Detecting high fructose corn syrup in the vicinity. Now, who the fuck leaves a trail of candy actually behind like that? Only one way to find out. Let's just hope it doesn't lead to a certain gingerbread house. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's actually going to be an episode, like an actual special of all the characters being fairy tale characters. Now that's something worth paying to see. <laughs> Thank you, parental unit. Signal growing stronger. Um, hello? When did knocking go out of fashion? Oh, Ma, look, do you think privacy is actually more better in this about us? Think about all the things that you girls have done going into Lincoln's room without any freaking privacy and not even knocking. Huh? Huh? What's that considered to, to you? Yeah, hypocritical much? No shit! Remember a few episodes where all the sisters are hypocrites and they say Lincoln's a hypocrite? High fructose corn syrup detected. High fructose corn syrup detected. High fructose corn syrup detected. Ugh, how dare you! Holy shit, she's got a sugar stash. Uh, let's hope it's just plain sugar and not the other kind of sugar. You know what this kind of reminds me of her having a little addiction to sugar? It reminds me of a Lilo and Stitch episode where somehow Lilo and Stitch and Peekly were on a sugar kind of freaking fest. 
This also reminds me of that one episode from Fairy Arpans, Just Desserts. Hey, AJ. And now I think I'll run a marathon. But first, Fairy God Parents, Fairy God Parents, Fairy God Parents! God damn! And that fucker's way out of his fucking mind. I think he's had way too much sugar thinking it over his fucking head. I don't see a warrant. This is a violation of my rights! Dangerously high levels of high fructose corn syrup detected. <gasps> what the hell? Did she swallow the whole thing whole? That's a, that's why you call chew your food, kids. Jeez. No wonder so many cartoon characters actually swallow too much food and don't even chew it. Check this shit out. God damn! You fucking slob, Johnny Bravo. <laughs> okay, which one of you put that there? May I have a word with Lola alone, please? <laughs> I don't know why. Look at the face on Lily. I don't know. If that face doesn't make me laugh, I don't know what is. Because you don't even see Lily have too much of a personality to begin with, you know? I don't blame her. She's still pissed off that she didn't get any bun cake. Lola, sweetie, it seems like your sweet tooth is getting out of hand. You think, Rita? When's the last time you even checked on your kids to make sure that they had a sweet tooth? Don't they all have a sweet tooth? Remember that one episode where they went almost sugar bonkers completely? Especially when Lola is always having an addiction to making a cake every time she's in the fucking kitchen. And on top of that, Rita's kind of a dentist, so wouldn't she check on this sort of thing 24-7? Yes, yes! Oh my gosh, Dreyas, yes! How the fuck would she not know that? Oh shit, I forgot. She She's not a dentist anymore, she works at the paper. Maybe it's time to take a little break from treats. A break from treats? <laughs> Please, it's not like I have a problem. You're eating a lollipop right now. Mm -hmm. What? Cut the crap. Don't you just fucking hate it how some people think that they don't have a problem with anything and then suddenly they actually prove them wrong about that? And one perfect example is a treehouse of horror with Homer Simpson being a blob at one point and he has an eating disorder and then suddenly he tries to claim that he doesn't have it and Bart says, you're eating Dr. Phil. And oh my gosh, it's like, oh, I don't know what these characters. Homer can be kind of delusional. That's, I think, Homer's biggest problem. Lola, probably she's as delusional too, but she's six. Lola is actually seven now. Right, right, right. Homer's around 40 years old. You know, it's good to set healthy goals. How about this? If you give up treats for a whole week, I'll buy you this pageant dress you've been eyeing. We're assassins, not bodyguards, okay? Don't invite us to shit unless someone's gonna die. Yeah, I'm sorry. Seriously? Just for giving up treats? You got a deal! Yeah, let's hope you don't eat those words, Lola, because the way you just said that, there's some kind of downside to this, especially when the episode is called Candy Crush, and what's that prove to everybody out there? Ah, good on the wordplay, though. Great! Then I'll just hold on to these for now. Oh, you're taking them all right now? Oh, great! Fabulous! You know, all that candy can be saved for the next trick-or-treaters around Halloween time. It won't be a waste. Wait, um, can I just have a moment alone with the salted caramel truffles? They're my absolute favorite. Of course. Goodbye, my sweet little friend. Ooh, have you ever tried a truffle? Yes, in fact, I actually keep a whole stash of truffles. There's actually salted caramel, there's sea salt, there's dark chocolate, white chocolate, there's birthday cake, strawberry cream flavor, I just got it. even blueberry flavor. Uh. Lola putting her face in the pill, as Lori once said, trust me, you're gonna fail at this. You and your sweet tooth. You would have to be a complete idiot to screw this up. So next day in the Loud House, we start to begin Luger's ex-sugar expedition about this, which means she cannot go for uh, at least one week of eating any sugary treats. Come to think of it, I had the kind of worst punishment back then, where I couldn't even have any kind of dessert or any kind of sugar treat for about a freaking week. Try doing it for a whole freaking year. Oh, uh, for my own entire life for being an 11 year old. Which means no cereal, no donuts, no pancakes. Oh, shit. N none of all that. Not even cake or candy or cookies or any of that shit. Oh. Morning, Daddy. I'll have the French toast today and make it extra Frenchy. <laughs> One French toast coming up. <laughs> Whoa, that's way too much frickin' maple syrup, girl. 
Have you not forgotten? Remember, sweetie, hold the syrup. Oh, right. I'll just have pancakes a la mode then. Um, that means covered in ice cream. Survey says... You want some of this? Don't hurt me. No, no, don't hurt me. This is the part where you run. Help! Help! Help me, somebody, please! Fine. Give me cereal. Candy in a bowl. Survey says... Who oh, you pushing, motherfucker? I don't make me smack fire out your ass! Relax, goddammit! What am I supposed to eat? Air? There are a lot of things. How about a nice bowl of oatmeal with fruit? I don't know if you actually had an oatmeal before, but I gotta tell you, sometimes these things are actually great. We used to have oatmeal all the time, and I've always wondered about this, and anyone can answer in the comments. Is oatmeal porridge, or are those two separate things? Okay, I can work with that. Oh yeah, baby. Time to carb load before the big game. Hey, you bitch. You threw away my pancakes, which were your pancakes. But I called them and now they were my pancakes. Huh? You're either with me or against me, Lynn. Now somebody stands up to Lynn. Where the fuck was this girl the last freaking six seasons ago? All right, breakfast on the floor. You guys finally listen to me. <laughs> that is not a chew toy. Stop it, Max. No, no, bad girl, put that shit down. You're not eating some of that shit off the carpet. Let Charles eat that. That girl needs to see a doctor. That's all I can say. Oh, the little Miss Motor Oil pageant is on. Whoa, 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 Motor Oil pa Miss pageant? Where the fuck is this kind of a, are you messing around with machines now? That's something that Lana would go out for. Maybe it's a combination. Maybe the pageants are being sponsored by Ford or Toyota or something. I don't know. This should keep my mind off treats. Wake up your taste buds with extreme fruity sour blasters. It's like a party in your mouth. <laughs> Let's see what else is on, shall we? IHOP and Wonka are dreaming up a magical new menu. Magnificently mouth-watering items like Wonka's perfectly purple pancakes. Want to bring home the imagination of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? There are lots of ways with Wonka candy, like Wonka Bar, and Nerds, and Sweet Tarts, and especially new double chocolate Wonka Donuts. Handcrafted by Master Chocolatiers. Our truffles are irresistible. <laughs> this poor baby is suffering. I honestly feel sorry for her. And Mr. Sprinkles. He needs to get on the wash. By the way, that's kind of a foreshadow. What do I mean by that? Oh, remember earlier about what she was saying goodbye to her little babies earlier? And now look at her and what she's doing? What's this going to lead up to in the very end? Damn, and I thought the Cadbury Bunny commercials were dicks intoxicating. When you look up, you'll see what I mean. Oh, Lola, honey, you look like you could use a little help. Oh, why don't you try this? Every time you're tempted to have sweets, just have a stick of celery instead. Celery? Well, I always like the crunch. This shouldn't be so bad. Um, really? Hope you don't eat those words. And with all the food stores that she could have eaten, she can't just always eat celery. Can't you just give her, like, baby carrots or maybe an apple or a banana or something? Because, honestly, eating celery, it kind of sucks if you have to eat it for an entire week. Not if you put peanut butter and raisins on them. Oh, that's so shit so good, especially during a Super Bowl. Some rose hip tea to go with your celery, Mr. Sprinkles? Oh, good. My Jack Sweet Chocolates of the Month are here. Who knew Mr. Grouse was addictive to chocolate as he is with lasagna? Shit, he might as well catch diabetes while he's at it. Diabetes. Diabetes. <laughs> Those caramel macadamia chocolates are my favorite. <laughs> hey! You're either with me or against me, Mr. Grouse! Now beat it, delivery boy! Unless you want some of this too! Huh? 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 I have! It ain't a good look, Black Dynamite! <laughs> no, wait! Machado! See, I don't know why the fuck she had to hose them down right there. I mean, honestly, it's her who shouldn't be eating any sugary cheese. So why can't they actually eat it? I mean, honestly, it's her, not them. They can actually eat Oh shit, this is kind of torture for her. Exactly. That's why I think she's doing it. 
if she sees someone else eating chocolate, she might get influenced herself. So she's that's why she's going either you're with me or against me. Who needs treats when you have the open road, fresh air, and no temptation? Oh boy, that's like an addict trying to fight off a smoking addiction. Shit, girl, stop eating something that you can't even keep your tongue off of. <sighs> the sweet, sweet music of the ice cream truck? <laughs> Not today! Huh, you won't get away that easily! Oh shit, I can't imagine why he is one of her best customers unless she did something to attempt this guy, especially about, you know, one of the kids actually waiting in line and somehow she doesn't have to wait in line, like she's gotta be the first to be in line to get ice cream. She is a sugar junkie, so kind of explains it. <laughs> ah! <laughs> well, that's the candy spirit, being sugar free, baby doll. Okay, technically, Lola can still eat popcorn since popcorn's more salty than sweet. Just a thought. Then again, she's not even allowed to bring outdoor food inside a movie theater. In fact, anybody shouldn't have to. Uh-uh. Why does Cheryl have a bar of chocolate in her hair? I wouldn't even eat that shit. Happy Friday, Lola! Oh, I'm so impressed with how well you've been doing. I Right? Wait a minute, how does Rita even know that she's not even sneaking some kind of sweets into her own mouth? Has she have been monitoring this whole time or has any of the siblings actually been on her? Because, you know, it's out, you're, you're either with me or you're against me. Huh, something like that. Maybe Lola's fighting strong in this one. She's done good so far. Even she's had some very good episodes, I might say. Get your wallet ready, because in a few hours, that pageant dress is mine! <laughs> I packed you some more celery for the road. Shit, bitch, give her some carrots or apple slices. I mean, jeez, eating celery? That's kind of sad, really. It's like eating broccoli off pizza. Ooh, or Lola well, could eat blueberries. Ooh, that could be even better. No thanks, we have a school field trip today. Those are always fun and distracting. Wherever we go, I shouldn't have any problems keeping my mind off treats. <laughs> You'll be shy! Let's just begin. So Lola and her whole class are actually taking a school field trip, and you're never gonna guess where the fuck they're actually going, as if I didn't even predict this shit was gonna happen already. Are you kidding me? Jack Sweet Candy Factory? <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. I feel sorry for this. I'm surprised that any school would take, a, take kids on a field trip to a candy factory. I feel really bad for Lola. She should have asked Principal Skinner to be her principal. Their field trip would have been to the box factory. And you know, I'll save so much of this criticism later because I know there's so many people that's gonna snark the crap out of this scene a bit, but... Oh, did I just see Melly get off the bus? And she, is she smiling? Ah, at least they didn't throw her away like a piece of crap. Yoo-hoo! Up here, kids! <laughs> Where are you? Welcome to my candy factory! You're in for a treat! I'd rather kill myself. There we go. Sarcasm is a foreign language to you, isn't it? There's so much to see! And the best part is, it's all edible! <gasps> so is this not okay? Idiot. That's right! You can eat everything! Just like my licorice zip line! Hmm, I wonder where have I actually heard this from? Because I'm pretty certain I've heard this from a movie from somewhere. Let's just hope a scrum daily lawsuit won't be in the future. You're an asshole. Ooh, even our gummy bear factory workers are edible! <laughs> ah! Oh yeah, uh, we can't let you eat them though. It's in their contract. <laughs> I have so many questions about the gummy bears. I know people are going to raise a bunch of red flags about this, but I'm a little too shocked that some of these gummy bears are actually alive. Then again, if they were animatronics, I could reason with that, but the way he just said that, how the fuck are these things even alive? Shit, you might as well be hiring a little midget that actually have orange faces painted. Uh, probably he couldn't get those. Lawsuit. Now, who wants to experience my yum-tastic candy paradise? I have no idea! 
<sighs> you can do this. Come on, baby girl. You got this. You've done this for a week. One more day. One more day. You got this. Trust me. You're gonna fuck up. It's gonna be big. Shall we begin? <laughs> Welcome to the first room on our tour. If you get lost, there's a map on the brochure. This is where we keep the candy cooker. Whoa. Our candy's made with love, but it's mostly made with sugar. Fuck, I feel the feeling that this guy is gonna start singing, because I'm already hearing some Dr. Seuss rhyming bullshit into this song. And people are complaining about how the way I'm rhyming in a couple of Loud House episodes. I don't blame you. Rhymes are pretty hard to do, especially in a Dr. Seuss style, but I want to hear more of this guy. Welcome to my back three. Would you like some taffy? We're here to make you smile, so we hope it's satisfactory. Welcome to my back three. Would you like some taffy? We're here to make you smile, so we hope it's satisfactory. Okay, aside from the yikes inducing lyrics, where the fuck is the adult supervision around here? I mean, honestly, there are a bunch of young kids here that don't even know what the fuck they're going with. Seriously. And I have to agree with you there. Well, shouldn't there be a teacher just in case that the kids get a little bit wacky because they see all the sugar and... Oh, how bad that is. Yeah, you got a bunch of first graders surrounded by candy. How do you think that's going to go? That way, when y'all go sugar bonkers, it's your parents' problem. It's my little way of getting revenge. Asshole chef. Yeah, yeah, shut the fuck up. Let's skip this right ahead. And the last thing I need is a rapping Michael Jackson Willy Wonka ripoff. I prefer the Gummy Bear song. Or I prefer this song. Or maybe even this song. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Oh, I keep it together, you're so close. <laughs> Whoa, the way she projected that, that's, the, that's like me telling the executives to cut the crap and stop trying to shoehorn too much into horror icons. <laughs> or tell Disney to stop taking slows for so much of rushing through the MCU. <laughs> Then again, that'd be me like shouting to stop making too many cartoons into live action movies. Enough! Enough! Yes! I did it! Ha! Thank goodness that's over! Ha! Take that, Jack Sweet! Huh? I'm sorry. Am I here early? <laughs> Leaving so soon? Certainly not without one of my ooey, gooey, creamy, delicious, salted caramel truffles! Truffles? Shit. Seeing that face, what's that make you think? Oh god, she's gonna give in. So Lola returns home without Lana Loud actually coming inside the house. Where the fuck did she ended up going to? And why is the bus actually coming late at this fucking hour? And the look on her face? Oh, you can already tell what the fuck happened. Hey, Lola, let's go get that new dress. Oh. <laughs> Why are you sad? I'm still not going to lie to everybody. I love how so much a kid actually hugs their mother's leg like that. Because it's just so cute. Yeah. I don't deserve the dress. I came to have a treat. Yeah, sweetie, how did this happen? We went on a field trip to a candy factory. And I tried so hard all day. But in the end, I just couldn't resist. Sweetie, was there any adult supervision? No, mommy. That's it. I'm still in the school. And next time, you're going to the box factory. Honey, I am so proud of you. Uh, maybe you didn't hear me. I failed. Big time. I think you missed something. Let me go over it again. Lola, sugar is okay in moderation. You made it through a whole week and a candy factory, and you only had one treat. I'd say you made a lot of progress. Oh, I'll give her credit on that one, because going through a whole entire week, that's kind of a hard thing to actually do, especially about going a week without smoking. But her actually not getting addicted to any kind of sweets, Lola has made progress over a couple of episodes, even with this one. Let's just hope this doesn't be a continuary error of her that she's actually going to be in with another sugar rush. Now that you mention it, I love the progress Lola went through. You think Lana can go for one week without getting dirty or muddy? I don't think so. Remember Undie Pressure? I think Lola actually lasted longer than all those bozos. 
Really? Oh, I guess it was pretty impressive. <laughs> myself every day really <laughs> see you surprise all of us really lola i mean really you really surprise us when it comes to a loudhouse episode focus on you <laughs> <laughs> so shall we go buy that new dress you're still gonna buy me the dress i don't care if anyone says that she lost the bet so much she just actually managed to beat it for an entire week and i think that's pretty much fair enough for her to actually go through and actually have the dress i mean i actually had a week of punishment so much and I thought I was going to get pizza night on Friday night, but somehow parents cut me slack and they let me join in that pizza night. And you know what? She only had one piece of chocolate. It's not like she went hog wild and ate everything in that factory. That's fair enough. She did actually make progress and she deserved it. Maybe we can get the matching shoes too? <laughs> Don't push it. Lola! Talk to me! I have new flavors! <laughs> I'm begging! Dude, if I ever see someone like this on my property, you know what I would say? Get off of my property! There you are! Wait, what are you- For the last time, Dalton, you're either with me or against me! Dalton, just be lucky you ain't getting waterboarded. Oh, that's <laughs> the worst. <laughs> yeah, take a look at Archer. Not pretty. Survey says... And just to reiterate, waterboarding will not affect me in any way whatsoever. <clears throat> And also, you have a vagina. I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know it, it would be like that. I mean, you, 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 you hear about it, you, you hear people say it's bad, but you think... <laughs> Oompa Loompa Doopa Dee Doo Got a Loudhouse episode for you Oompa Loompa Doopa Dee Dee If you are smart you'll listen to me Little Lola Loud was addicted to sweet Her mom read a will by a dress that's so neat One week without eating sugary treats Her class went on a field trip right on down the street To a candy factory I didn't write this crap at all Oompa Loompa Doopa Dee Head Had herself a trouble and came home real sad Rita was so proud and not mad Lola did her best and I say that's fair and square Who the hell cares? And that was Candy Crush. Come with me and you'll be in the I can't help it so much for being an actual guy who's addicted to sugar and actually loves candy so much, especially when I love Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I actually got to give this episode a pass, and this is an episode that's worth recommending to actually watch. And it's not because it's focused on Lola, it's actually the fact that how she tried so hard to make so much progress of not getting addicted or hooked on to sweets. It's like someone being a drug addict against either on smoking weed or actually drinking alcohol, try to make it through an entire one week or entire month without even giving in. And what Lola did, she actually didn't make pretty much progress for it, even toward the end. And I think it was pretty much reasonable that she just only gave in for that one treat that she actually liked so much. Ever since the beginning of this episode and when she saw it on television and then finally came to the end at the actual candy factory, she actually just had that small treat. It's not like she went psycho hose beast and ate somebody's entire birthday cake during the first day of her first attempt of not giving in. With all of it being all good and sugar-coated throughout this episode, especially about what I love what was done in this episode, I need to criticize something. <gasps> if there's one thing I have to criticize about this episode, it's the end of the second act of this episode. I mean, it raised a few questions about why the hell did the kids actually go to a candy factory for a field trip? Where's the adult supervision? And why the hell are these gummy bears even alive? Again, I shouldn't actually judge it for what it should be. I should judge it for what it is. And what it is, it kind of feels a bit unrealistic about going into so much this candy factory and just letting the kids just roam around the place and go sugar bonkers. But I guess that's how some cruel irony of what some staff and teachers would actually do just to get back at their parents, especially with the loud kids' parents. It didn't bother me too much, but it just raised a bunch of few questions that kind of felt bullshit-like. I mean... I can't go wrong so much of me being huge with Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, etc. But I have to admit, I enjoyed this episode so much. I prefer to be on my top three of Season 7 Loud House episodes. 
And you know, I especially love the game Candy Crush, and I just love how the title actually is. Lola is actually a good progressing character, especially how the way which she is with Rita, how she just goes one entire week just eating celery. I mean, give her some baby carrots and apple slices and she's good to go. Because celery can be a bitch sometimes to actually eat through an entire one week. It's like eating a salad, but no dressing. Especially, I think this should have almost been an, a great Mother's Day episode, kind of, because when it came to an episode called Crown and Dirty, there's nothing but so much Crown and Dirty about it. I mean, Lola's the crown, but who's the dirty? I mean, that should have been like a Lola and Lana episode. Again, like I said, I shouldn't judge an episode for what it should be. I should judge an episode for what it is. And what it is with Candy Crush, I actually just loved it. I mean, I just progressively loved it. Like, not 100% pure, but I can just give it 94% pure imagination. Because honestly, if you want to make something fun and you actually like candy and actually like sweets so much, this is an episode that's going to give you a good sweet tooth time. But... If I may suggest, you can actually watch this episode before you even watch either Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory or the new Wonka movie. I'm just saying to make it extra sweet. I would actually say more on this one, but I think I've had enough sugar for one day. And I'm just going to hand the mic over to Andreas now. Okay, I got in there. This was actually a fun episode for me. One of the better season seven episodes, in my opinion. It's really, I just love it because sometimes little kids get addicted to candy. And, and Lola making this bed with her mother kind of makes sense. Let's be honest. If Lana, Lincoln, Luna, or Luann made this kind of deal with their parents, you know they would immediately fail on day one. But Lola... She is a fighter, and she tried her best trying to fight the sugar rush she has. You can tell that this kind of helps her character development. Another thing I liked in this episode was Jack Sweet. The entire factory. Sure, it's kind of Minikin, a uh, famous movie that we all know from 1971, but it has its own way of representing candy. Not to mention, I really love that song. It's like under the sea level of rhymes. Um, really? It's amazing how many rhymes you can come up with in that kind of song. I just don't know what else to put with this episode. I just, Lola is one of my favorite characters. And seeing her struggling through this, I really want her to succeed. Yeah, Lola can be a diva. She's a prima donna. She can be a brat. But this is one of the reasons why we love her, that she's going to do whatever she can to get what she wants, to prove a point. And Greg Griffin has done a great job bringing this character to life, like showing different ways of having Lola succeed. Yeah, she failed at the end, but as Rita said, she tried her best, and that's the best anybody can do. So, yeah, yeah, I had a lot of fun looking over this episode again, and it really wanna makes me want to try out a bunt cake. So, this episode was just fun to me. It's not like big and glamorous as something like earlier episodes, but Still, I had a good time with this episode. I had a lot of fun. Seriously, Lana, you need to go see a doctor. That's it for me. This has been the Loud House Critic. And what's your favorite piece of candy? You are not going to believe what Lincoln's up to now. Lincolnberry pancakes, <laughs> Lincoln ice cream, 